All right. So for the first, let's see, uh, two uh, Roman numerals on your outline. I I'm just going to talk through some of the that material, and then you also have some video clips. But the, I need to kind of link some of those clips together for you. So the first thing, the first Continental Congress of 1774, that happened as a result of those co coercive or intolerable acts that we saw in the la last lecture module. Remember, um, England passed those as a consequence of the colonists dumping the tea in the Boston Harbor, and they were trying to isolate Massachusetts, but really what it did is it like brought the colonies together and they had this meeting, the First Continental Congress. And so what they did there, that first thing that it says Declaration of Rights and Grievances, they wrote up the rights and grievances and they sent it off to England. Um, they uh, do a couple things next. They decide that they'll meet again. They're meeting in September of 1774 and they decide that they're going to meet again in May of 1775 because that's how long it's going to take to send their letter over to England, get a response back, have it come back to the colonies. It, you know, it's months, easy, three to six months before you can have a full conversation. Um, and then the other thing they do is they uh, decide, they, they create this Continental Association, which is like, um, you know, representatives of all the um, colonies and the Continental Association oversees the committees of observation. And what those committees do is they observe people's um, speech and their, um, like if they're a shopkeeper, they'll show up at the shop, the shop and they'll like make sure that they're still um, supporting the boycott. And so this one is always kind of ironic to me that um, again, in this uh, struggle of liberty and freedom, we're gonna monitor what people are saying and we're gonna uh, monitor um, their actions in terms of how they're behaving. So just kind of another example of those contradictions. And then um, remember too, um, one of the consequences of the T Act was, uh, again, with the coercive or intolerable acts, um, Gage was put in charge of Boston. Well, he learns that the uh, colonists are stockpiling weapons out in the city of Concord. And then he's got also got a couple people he wants to arrest. And so he sends out troops to go collect those weapons in Concord. But on the way to collecting those weapons in Concord, the troops go through the town of Lexington. Now, the colonists had suspected something like this might happen, and they had a, an alert system in a motion. This is the story of Paul Revere. Revere was actually arrested rather quickly, and there was a whole bunch of other people that actually rode that night, letting um, the colonists know that the um, the troops were out, the regulars were out, probably not the British are coming since at this point we're all still British. Um, but the people had gathered in the um, city commons of Lexington. When they saw the British troops show up, they realized like they were totally outnumbered. So the American colonists turned to leave and uh, gunfire goes off. We don't know to this day who initiated the first shot of what's going to be the American Revolution. Um, then the, um, the British troops head on to Concord. Now when they get to Concord though, the American colonists are more ready for them. They're more prepared. There's more people there. And the American colonists fight like they've been fighting Native Americans for the last 150 years. So they fight from behind bridges and behind trees. And the colonists win in Concord. And the British go um, hightail it back to Boston. They assume that this is just a fluke, that these, again, are just a bunch of backwoods farmers. But um, the British will continue to make those assumptions. Um, it will be one of the things that helps us win. The French is really what's going to help us win, but, but those um, uh, misplaced assumptions by the British will also um, assist in us winning. Um, so remember, we were going to meet at the Second Continental Congress of May of 1775, but in the interim, this, these battles had broken out in Lexington and Concord uh, in April of 1775. So this pushes the Second Continental Congress to, among other things, decide to create a Continental Army, and Washington is selected to head that up, uh, in large part due to his experience in the French and Indian Wars. A lot of the action that's happened so far up north, so if we have somebody from uh, Virginia lead us, it will show like more unity among um, the colonies. 
Um, if, though, you had asked a majority of colonists at the end of 1775, should we break free and become an independent country? They would have looked at you like, are you kidding me? How would we even do that? We have the hindsight to know that's what's going to happen, but they had no concept of doing that. Um, but something happened within six months because December of 1775, most colonists would not have even considered breaking free from England and forming their own country. But by July of 1776, we do. And the only thing that we can see that's in between that period is Thomas Paine's common sense. So you've got Thomas Paine's common sense um, in your readings, and then I've got a phone clip for you about Thomas Paine's common sense. All right, I hope you're doing well. Take care.